Shalom to my brothers and sisters who are in the body of Yahushua HaMashiach. And again, this is the lesson on dealing with Yahuwah's calendar. This is part three. And the continuance of what we was talking about, what is a day unto Yahuwah and what is a day unto man. Now, we already learned what is a whole calendar day. But here's another mystery that many of my brothers and sisters miss when reading Genesis chapter 1. Now, Yahuwah's time is not the same as our time. You probably say, what do you mean, Sister Gideon? In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, and we'll go down now, it gives us a hint about Yahuwah's time. Man has to understand again as it's written in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 through 9. And it says that the most high ways are not our ways, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. So we have to keep that in mind when we're trying to understand the most high, his time. So 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. And I'm reading from the King James Bible 1611 version. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Most High as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Hmm. I'm going to even read verse 9 because a lot of us don't understand about the Most High time. And to us, it seemed like it takes forever for him to do what he say. Verse 9, the Most High is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willingly that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So again, the Most High time is not the same as our time. Let us also go to the book of Psalms, chapter, I mean, chapter 90, verse 4. The book of Psalms, chapter 90, verse 4. And just bear with me on this. 90, verse 4. Okay. Almost getting there, my people. Okay, 90. Verse 4. Here we go. For a thousand years in thy sight are but, at, are but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Okay, so we learn that a day unto our Father, far as time, we're talking about time now, is like a thousand years. That's how much time has passed with the Father. So when you read Genesis chapter 1, you have to keep that in mind. Another area to prove what I'm saying is we need to go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 17. I mean, Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. And this is what he told Adam. But of the day, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest, Thereof thou shalt surely die. Now again, we know the word did not contradict itself. Here it was telling Adam, when he ate of that fruit, in that day he would die. So the question is, what day was Adam created? If we read Genesis chapter 1, verses, um, let me see here, 24 through 30, 24 to 28, we will learn that Adam was created in the sixth day. So Adam died in the sixth day. And you might say, what do you mean, sister? Yeah, yeah, that don't make any sense. Let's go back to the beginning of the book. So the beginning of the book was day one. And based on 2 Peter 3, verse 8, a thousand years is a day unto the Father. 
So day one in creation was the, the thousandth year. So when he created Adam, Adam was created in the sixth day of creation, in the six thousand year. And our father rested on the seventh day of creation, which is the seven thousand year. So Adam was created in the six thousand year, which is the sixth day. And he died in the six thousand nine hundred and thirtieth year of the creation timeline before the seventh day. So in Genesis chapter 2, and with regard to error, Genesis chapter 2 verse 17 proves that Adam died in the seventh day. Another error we can prove it is when we get to Genesis chapter 1 verses 14 through, uh, let's see here, 19, that's the day when he created what? The lights in the firmament of the heaven. And those lights are what? The sun, the moon, and the stars. Now, here's a question to meditate on. Hmm. When did the lunar year begin? And when did the solar year begin? The lunar year and the solar year began in the fourth day of creation, which is the 4,000 year. This is also when we have time to be established for man. See, the father don't need these things for he know what time is and he know how long time is. But for man, he gave these lights in the firmament of the heavens to give us understanding about time. Again, this is why we know in verse Genesis chapter 1. Verse 14, he said what? Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from night and let them be for what? For signs, for seasons, for days and years. My people, this is how time came into place. Do you see how the Most High said your ways are not my ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts? And he is so correct. I also wrote this down to remind me because we will be talking about this in future videos about the lunar year and the solar year. In the beginning, when things was was perfect, when man <laughs> did not do, I would say, I would say unrighteous acts, time was perfect in itself. In the beginning, each lunar month was three. Each lunar month was 30 days, and that's how we got 360 days. And each month, I mean, and um, I'm sorry, the lunar year in the beginning was 360 days. The solar year in the beginning was 364 days. But when you read the Bible later on, you begin to find out there were certain events that happened that affected time. And this is why we now have 354 days or 355 days in the lunar year. And in the solar year, we have 365 days. And 360 or 366 days in that year. For certain events has happened in the Bible that has affected time. And I'm a witness to observe this because um, lately, well, when I started learning about the Most High Counter, I kept a record of, of the years. And I have personally witnessed this. This is true. That a lunar year can have 354 days or 355. And the solar year can have 365 days and 366. You have to observe the heavens, my people, to see what the word is saying. For the Bible is confirmed by the heavens and even with history. So I end with this video or part three. And I want you to click on part four to understand the mystery about a thousand years equals a thousand days. Shalom.